my real honor and pleasure to welcome all of you to this very, very special day and gathering and uh, to bring warm words of uh, congratulations on behalf of our Board of Trustees. And I'm very pleased to be uh, joined by three of my colleague friends and outstanding trustees uh, and advocates for Catholic education, the Vice Chair of our Board, John Valvasori, Trustee Aldo Dentino, and Trustee Mary Nardini, uh, who, like me, are just so proud of all of you. I want to, at the outset, on their behalf and my own, commend and thank all of the members of the organizing committee who have worked so very, very hard to organize this special day, uh, in particular the co-chairs, uh, Mr. Pizzaferrato and Ms. Fema, uh, for their leadership uh, and uh, commitment to it. I want to recognize all of the staff in our system, those present today and those who couldn't be here, our senior administration, our principals, our vice principals, our teachers, support staff, administrative staff, chaplains, and all who serve in any way. Uh, we in Hamilton have staff second to none in the province, and I ask you who benefit most uh, from their commitment to students to please join me in thanking all of them. Th this year, this year uh, next May, the theme for Catholic Education Week, and really the theme throughout the year, will be renewing the promise. And all of us involved in Catholic Education promise to protect and promote this tremendous gift that we have of publicly funded Catholic Education. But as well, we promise to maintain and live up to the pillars upon which it has been built. We promise to be committed to academic and co-curricular excellence. We promise to walk with Christ each and every day. That promise includes being good stewards of creation in our schools, but in every part of our lives. We promise to promote a culture of life where society will protect the, all the vulnerable, including the unborn and those that are, are vulnerable in the latter parts of the life. And of course, we promise to serve the disadvantaged in our own communities and throughout the world. And we are so fortunate to have students and staff throughout our schools who do that each and every day, but in a very public way today. And you are to be commended for that. We congratulate you for it. And we really wish you all of God's blessings today and always. Thank you and God bless. At this time, I ask that you prepare yourself for Mass by putting yourself in the presence of our Lord. We bring to God our faults and our failings, our successes and our accomplishments. We stand before our Father today asking for his blessing as we partake in our noble pilgrimage endeavors. Our celebrant for Mass today is His Excellency Bishop Anthony Tonus. Please stand and join us for the opening hymn, Anthem.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. My dear friends, it's a great joy and pleasure to be with you this morning. For those of you who don't know me, I was the Bishop of Hamilton from 1984 until 2010. I've been retired for seven years now, and bishops retire at 75, so you can do the arithmetic. It's a pleasure to join in this 14th annual walk, walking with Christ for the good of others. We come together to pray for the Lord's blessings upon us and upon those whom we try to help by our good efforts. We ask these blessings, and as we prepare to celebrate the great prayer of the Church, the Holy Mass, we call to mind our sins, our faults, our failings. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we glory you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us, and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. <coughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people, and he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord.
He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I shall dwell. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry of having plenty and of being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress. My God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand quietly. From the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to the chief priests and Pharisees in parables. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go, therefore, into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. They went out into the streets 
and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. The Gospel of the Lord. Mr. Daly and honored guests, dear staff and of all of our Catholic schools and of our system, and most especially, my dear students. The gospel message today is really about an invitation. That, that's what the whole story is about, being invited. And in this story, there's a wedding feast, the king's wedding feast. People are invited, and they choose not to come. And so others are invited. But the big thing is about the invitation. You, too, have been invited. At the time of our baptism, we become God's special children and we are invited to walk with Christ, the theme of your walk today. To walk with Christ in goodness, and we strive throughout our lives to do that. To be good people. Not goody-goody people, good people. And you have been invited not only to be good, but also today you have been invited because you are good, because you are connected to the Lord, because you are God's children, you've been invited to do good. That's what goodness is about. It's about staying close to the Lord. That's what we call being good. And then, through the goodness that we receive through God's blessings from being near to him, we take that goodness, we pour it out, and we help others. And you've been invited, and you said, I'm coming. You said, I'm not too busy. I'm not too tired. I'd rather be with some other friends. I just can't be bothered. No, you didn't say any of those things. You said, I'm going to be there. I'm going to help. And you have done that, and I thank you sincerely from the bottom of my heart for doing that. And remember, the invitation is always a double invitation. It isn't just to do good. We've got to do good. We know we'd have to do that. But we also have to walk with the Lord. And that's what we strive to do every day of our lives. You have accepted the invitation, you're here, we all thank you, and we are all so very, very pleased to be able to participate with you. May God bless you all. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father, who watches over us always, 
and hears us in our needs. The response to the petition is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that those in leadership roles model for all the kindness and compassion of the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this time of fear and division between those holding differing points of view, that God's love for all people will unite and strengthen us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in the Dominican Republic, Haiti, and Uganda, who must struggle for the basics of human life, May we, our demonstration of solidarity today bring them hope as well as material supports. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our schools, our city, and our nation, that we will learn to embrace the gifts and needs of all our citizens, especially the poor and powerless. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick, the elderly, and for those who struggle with mental illness or chronic pain, that we may recognize God's power in their frailty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially those who have died due to natural disasters, may they know perfect happiness in eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace that heals all conflict and all wounds, for peace that lives in our homes and in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear these our petitions. Grant us always the assistance of your loving grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Will they bring the support? Please join us in our offertory hymn, I Am the Bread of Life. Okay.
dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to us. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters <clears throat> who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. During the distribution of Holy Communion, it is important that we remain orderly and respectful. 
Throughout the form, cafeteria, and gymnasium, we have Gail Guide and Cathedral Student Council student ushers that will help direct you. I ask that those ushers please now begin to take their places. For those of us in the form in the cafeteria, you will be proceeding in line to the nearest aisle and moving to a Eucharistic minister in your respective locations to receive communion. Please look to your ushers and your Eucharistic ministers for guidance. For those of us in the gymnasium, we will use the following instructions to receive communion. People seated in the center sections of bleachers, so the center section here, the center section of this bleacher, and the center section of this bleacher, and in the chairs below as well, will proceed down the line into an aisle immediately to your left that leads to a Eucharistic minister. Receive communion and return to your seats via the opposite aisle on the right of your row. Please once again look to your ushers and Eucharistic ministers for guidance. Those located in the side sections of bleachers and those seated in the upper mezzanine level, so that would be side sections here and here, also here and here, and here and here, and in the mezzanine. Your Eucharistic minister will proceed up the aisle to you. Please file out of your row, receive communion, and sit in the row that is directly below the one that you are in now. Please once again look to your ushers and Eucharistic ministers for guidance. When receiving communion, the proper response is amen. For those that are not Catholic or do not want to receive communion, please join the rest of your row in line and instead receive a blessing from one of our Eucharistic ministers. In order to receive a blessing, simply cross your arms across your chest and a Eucharistic minister will bless you. At this time, as our Eucharistic ministers are about to proceed to their locations, I ask that you put yourself in the presence of God. Throughout the distribution of communion, I ask you to either sing along with our hymns, Remembrance, 10,000 Reasons, and Amazing Grace, or alternatively, you can pray quietly to yourselves, pray for those around you, and pray for the people that you've enjoyed this pilgrimage for today.
this wine Now the simple may divine For any to receive By your mercy we come to your table By your grace you are making us faithful Lord, we remember you And the remembrance leads us to worship And as we worship you Our worship leads to communion We respond to your invitation We remember you See his body, his blood Know that he has overcome Every trial we will face And none too lost to be saved None too broken or ashamed Lord, we remember you, and remembrance leads us to worship, and as we worship you, our worship leads to communion, we respond to your invitation, we remember
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace and love of Christ our Savior. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Bishop Tonus. I now call upon our Pilgrimage Committee Chairperson, Mrs. Linda Thema, Principal of Our Lady of the Assumption Catholic Elementary School, to introduce our Director of Education. Just before Mr. Hansen comes up to address us, I would like to, on behalf of Mr. Siapana and the entire steering committee, uh, bring great thanks to our choir for their incredible gift of music. We would also like to thank our altar servers for their great assistance, for our ushers ensuring that there is order, for our tech crew for bringing this incredible celebration to every part of Cathedral High School, whether you're in the forum, cafeteria, or here in the gym. Uh, they truly have made sure that the, the service, that this is a place of God in worship and has tr transformed the school so that we celebrate in unity today. So thank you to the tech crew. And thank you as well to Cathedral High School for their hospitality. It is uh, an incredible day, but we certainly are grateful for them opening their doors to us and making sure that they are ready to receive us in, in such an uh, incredible way. Thank you. At this time, as co-chairperson of Pilgrimage, I would like to take a moment to invite to the podium our Director of Education for the Hamilton-Wentworth Catholic District School Board. In his roles as teacher, vice principal, principal, assistant superintendent, superintendent, and now Director of Education, Mr. David Hansen has worked to integrate Catholic faith elements into everyday activities that impacts staff, students, and school communities. His effort to ensure that the effectiveness of any school is evidenced through how students and staff experience faith at school and could not be more prevalent than on a day like this with the pilgrimage as the focal point that brings staff, students, and families together for one cause as we work to bring justice to those less fortunate in the world. Mr. Hansen, a graduate of our system and a parent of three beautiful children currently attending schools in our system, ladies and gentlemen, please join with me in welcoming our Director of Education, Mr. David Hansen. Thank you very much, uh, Linda. Uh, Your Excellency, the, Mr. Daly, members of the board, and uh, colleagues from the senior administration, it really is always a great opportunity for me to be able to speak to so many of our staff and students on behalf of all of the senior administration team, all who are here uh, joined with us today. Uh, my first task is to add to Linda's uh, thanks to so many, but in particular uh, 
to thank Bishop Tonis for his presence here today. Boys and girls and staff members, we need to know how blessed we are to have bishops who care deeply for students and staff and for education and for the work that we do. And Bishop Tonis has always been close to our schools. Just this week, Bishop Tonis celebrated with the Bishop Tonis community in, in blessing the brand new field that they have at, at Bishop Tonis. And I know he's regularly at Bishop Tonis Secondary School. And Bishop Tonis has been a wonderful supporter of this event and has a deep history with so many events in our board. So Bishop, on behalf of all of us here and on, on behalf of the board, thank you for your support, your prayers, and your ongoing pastoral presence to us. You are a true gift to us. Thank you, Bishop. I, I will echo some of the thanks of Ms. Mr. Daly and Ms. Fema from, from earlier today. I, I do have to thank our co-chairs who, who pulled together such a wide group of people who pulled together our pilgrimage each year and the many, many volunteers who have spent many, many days and have had early morning this morning and have been really all over the city trying to decide how things would unfold today. And I thank in particular uh, Superintendent of Education, Corrado Siapana, who has overseen this on behalf of our senior administration team and, and does absolutely wonderful work with our co-chairs and, and the entire committee. And I will also recognize who is present here, always retired Superintendent of Education, Nancy DiGregorio, who is one of the, who is one of the real founders of this event. So thank you to all of those. I really do need to uh, echo Mr. Daly's thanks to our staff who have dedicated their time to be here in support of students today. We know this event and events like this cannot happen without you and we thank you for answering your call to a vocation in Catholic education. Your actions in supporting our students today but each day model for us a true act of service and about evangelization. You demonstrate the centrality of Jesus Christ in your own life, and in a concrete way, we, you bring the mission and vision of this board to life, and I thank all staff who are here. And to our wonderful students who have taken time to be here today and in so many other places, our Pope tells us true Christian witness involves a journey, service, and giving freely of oneself. In fact, the Holy Father goes on to say that a follower of Jesus who doesn't serve others isn't a Christian. As we support the people of the developing world, know that in our simple way today, we are contributing directly to that essential mandate of our faith, to serve Jesus by serving others. You all have to know how proud we all are of you. You have a collective power and capacity that likely knows no limit. This is a small action, but what you can achieve in this world to right the wrongs of the world are limitless, and we are proud of you for that. So God bless you. Thank you for being people of hope. Thank you for being here today. And while we might not journey together today, we will continue our journey in service of those participating, those who most need our help. God bless all the very best. Thank you once again for your cooperation during our Mass. Um, we will end our Mass now, so I'll ask Bishop Tonus to give us a final blessing, and then I will ask our congregations in the form, also in the cafeteria and here in the gymnasium, to please sit after our recessional hymns. Father 
and the Son and the Holy Spirit go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Make a difference.